Okay, let's take a look at leak code 428 serialized and deserialized anary tree. So yesterday I posted a video of the serialized and deserialized binary slash binary search tree. And this problem is very similar in that we're gonna use pre-order traversal again. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, do this problem individually from the previous problem, excuse me. So even if I, even if you haven't watched that video, you'll be able to do this one. Uh, this problem just by watching this video so I mean I'll pretty much you know go over again the um, how the DFS works uh, how how you use pre-order traversal and I'll do and I'll kind of just walk through step by step with a recursive call stack to show you um, how everything gets populated and traversed with the DFS so you can really deeply understand this um, you know walk through so <clears throat> Okay, so first thing we have to understand is the problem. So to serialize and deserialize, this basically just means um, we have two functions. We have a serialized function where we're given a root node, and then we have to turn the root, this this tree, into a string. And then in the deserialize, we're going to take the string and then turn it back into the original tree structure. So, um, yeah, kind of just going around in a circle. Um, yeah, so... Um, the first thing you need to know uh, is that with an nary tree, um, I think uh, I don't. Yeah, okay. So, anyways, for the for the nary tree, uh, the main difference in how you recursively traverse it, you know, from a binary tree with a binary tree, you can just call um, DFS of node dot left, DFS of node dot right. With the nary tree, you don't know how many children. There are so you have to just um, you can't just like you know manually write it out like this you have to go through the the array of children and then call DFS on each child like this um, so that's the main difference with an nary tree um, for this problem we're still going to do a pre-order traversal so let's just look at um, a pre-order traversal of this tree here and see um, let, let's see how we would serialize it if it were the previous problem like um, uh, basically just doing a pre-order traversal and then putting the the null values where they belong um, so so what we did in the last video for the binary tree is we just did um, we did a pre-order traversal so starting at the one we have the one then we go left to the three then we go left to the five then we try to go left and there's nothing there so we print the none and then we come back up to the five and then we go to the right print the none again then we go back up to the three then we go to the right print the six so if you're following along over here you can see we're printing out the respective stuff that we're touching and then once we finish looking at the six um, six has no left no right so both of those are printed as none then we come back up to the three come back to the one then one will go to the two so two is printed and then the two children which are none are printed and then once two is done we go back to one then go to the four and then uh, four is printed and then the children which are none are printed so that's what it would look like if we were to treat this as like a, a binary tree um, or if we were to serialize it the same way we did for the previous problem um, uh, so basically the problem with this is, you know, let's try to use this encoding to try to um, let's try to use this encoding to to build the nary tree. Let's see how how can we do that? Um, so we have the one as the root, obviously, and then next we can have the three as a child. Then next we can have the um, five as a child. Um, we can have the none as a child uh, see see we just don't know where the you know where the child array ends for each parent the problem here is that uh, we just don't know you know how many children this one has there's no information that tells us how many children one has we we I mean for all we know the rest of these elements here could all be children of one right um, this is an n area tree it doesn't tell us how many children each one is supposed to have um, you know we're not given that information of n um, you know if we look at this second example here this first layer has four children 
then some of these children of the first layer ha have only two children or one children, right? So we don't even know, you know, what the expected number of children is supposed to be. So we can't necessarily, we can't definitively say that these, um, you know, we can't definitively place each uh, node, right? We don't, we don't know the structure of this tree. We don't know exactly, you know, you know, this one could have like five children. It could have one children one child you know it doesn't it doesn't tell us so this could be another possible you know um destruction deserialization aka like reconstruction of the tree so you know another way we could you know create this tree is if we did um you know we put the put the nun down here so you know there's there's too many ways that we could you know uh interpret this this data it's not conclusive there's no there's no definitive way for us to know the relationship between each parent and and which one which which of the following nodes are considered its considered its children so we need a better way to serialize the string than just than the way we did in the previous um, problem um, so a, a, an approach that we can take is we can capture the a second piece of data you know besides just the node itself we can capture a second piece of data which is the number of children it has right so um, if we were to take this tree you know and break it down so it would be a node value of one and it has three children so that's what this first block of inform information is going to tell us and then um, following a pre-order traversal we traverse to the left and then the next piece of information is we have a node value three with two children right so that's what this next piece of uh, information is and then we traverse to the left again based on pre-order traversal and then we come to the node of value five with zero children right and then we do the same thing for six zero and then two zero and four zero so in this way now we'll know you know we'll know exactly you know how many times we have to call DFS to you know you know how many how many children it's going to have following it right so this um, you know this three right here marks that we're gonna iterate you know from zero to three so the next three elements in this list are going to be considered its children and then you know respectively so like here um, this one this th uh, node of value three has two number of children in this piece of information so we know that the next two directly after are its children right so that's that's kind of how we're going to use this extra piece of information in order to help us create the exact same initial n airy tree okay so now i'm going to walk through exactly how we're going to generate this in the deserialize function um, so just think of the deserialize as as rebuilding it using the string and then building it back into the original tree so the first thing we want to do like like i did in the last video is i'm going to turn this input string so the deserialize function takes in a string so i'm going to turn that input string I'm obviously going to split it and stuff, but um, let's just say that um, it's already split by the delimiter of the comma, whatever. But yeah, anyways, just you want to turn it into a deck. And the reason we want to use a deck is because you can pop off the front in O of one time. And so we, we're going to need to pop off. Once we create a new node, we want to pop it off so that the, t the front of the deck is always going to be the one that's holding the next node that we should be creating. You know, if we pop off the one comma three, then the next node we create is this three, three uh, node value three with two children. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna start from scratch and show you exactly how this tree is built up. I'm gonna I have some pseudocode here to kind of help guide us through the process. Um, this isn't the exact code, but this is just like a little basic outline of what's what's happening, um, and then. Uh, this is just like the bare minimums and then there's a recursive call stack which is going to show you how exactly the recursion is happening and um, when every node gets you know linked to its respective parent and stuff you know because let me preface by saying that in DFS um, you kind of the, the nodes are not actually linked up until after it finishes traversing down one whole path and then once that whole path is finished then it'll go back up and then once it hits the return statement then it starts to connect the the dots um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that in a second so 
Okay, so let's just start off by looking at this DFS method here. So the first thing we do is we're going to unpack this um, deck.popleft. So deck.popleft is just popping off the first item here. So one hashtag three. So the first number is going to be our node value. Second number is going to be our number of children. So that's what I have represented here. So let's process this. Let's pop it off, process it. And then we're going to create a new node with that value. So we're going to create a new node with value one. And then we're going to iterate in the range of that number of children, right? So we're going to iterate from zero to three. And then each iteration of zero to three, we're going to have, uh, we're going to add the result of a DFS call to the children array of that current node, current node being one. So right now we can, this, this, think of this call stack as just like kind of keeping track of which um, layer we're in, which, which node, which nodes call stack we're, we're looking at. So right now we're looking at the call stack. We're looking at the call for node one. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll keep updating this as we continue. And so, right. The, once the, once node one comes into this for loop, it's going to try to append um, the result of DFS. And also let me say that we can append, you know, a DFS call because each DFS call is actually returning a node. And uh, you'll see, you'll see in a second. So, um, yeah. So the first thing we do is we we go into another DFS call, and then once we are in this new DFS call, we're actually in a different, um, you know, call stack frame. And this new call stack frame is for the node three. And the reason is because um, during this call frame, we're going to be processing the next item in the deck, right? The first thing we do is we always pop off the. Uh, the leftmost item in the uh, deck. So that gets processed, three hashtag two. So that is going to be created, a new node with three, with value three and two children is gonna be created. So I'm gonna just put this here floating in memory at some point. So like I said, these two nodes don't know, uh, don't have a relationship with e each other just yet. I'll show you when they do officially become linked up. So you can just think of them as like floating around in space right now, in, in some random pointers in memory. Okay, so um, we just created this node, right, in this call stack. Um, and then we're going to iterate in the range of zero to two because this has two children. So it's gonna to try to append a DFS call. So then when we call this DFS, it takes us to another call frame, which is going to be for the um, call frame of node five, right, because at this new DFS call, we're going to process this five zero and pop it off. And then we're going to create a new node with um, value five and zero children. So that's what's happening here. And then we're going to iterate in the range of zero to zero. So that this whole statement is just skipped because zero to zero um, can't be a for loop condition. And then we're going to return this node, the node that of the call frame that we're currently in, which is node five. So this node five, um, gets returned to its previous call to, to the call that it came from and it was called from the, the stack frame of node 3 node 3 is the one that called the node.children.append and it called DFS and that DFS created this 5 so this this 5 0 actually is, is being created by um, this call from 3 as you can see right this this uh, this uh, the frame that we're current currently on was five and we just finished processing it. So now we're going back to the um, previous call stack frame of three, right? So then three will continue. Um, remember, we need to iterate from zero to two for, for this one because it has two children. So we only finished processing the first children. Let's let's make another node.children.append call in this for loop. So basically just calling DFS again um, for the second child and let's see what happens. So then we're going to be brought into another call frame for the node six, right? Because in this call frame, um, we're going to be popping off the six and then creating a new node of six, um, value six with zero children. And then so in this frame, um, so uh, we're going to iterate in the range from zero to zero. So um, that doesn't happen. So then it comes down here and hits the next statement, which is return node. So it's going to return itself to whichever call that, you know, called it. And the, 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 the call that called it was um, right here. Node three is the one that called it slash created it. So we're going to return it to node three. 
and so this is when it finally gets linked up okay so it gets linked up right here when this return statement um, happens okay so now node 3 has just finished its you know for loop it, it um, processed two two children um, nodes and then now so this call stack for node 3 has just finished the for loop and now it's going to return itself to whichever call you know whichever call it came from so node 3 came from the call from node 1 so it's going to return itself to node 1 so now this is when these two get linked up okay so then after that finishes now uh, now node 1 has only processed one out of its three children so now it has two more children to process you know in this for loop right um, so yeah so now it's going to call node.children.append DFS again and then now this new DFS call is going to give it going to bring us to the call frame for node 2 because that's the next one in our um, deck and so we pop it off and then we process it and so we're gonna just place it somewhere in memory and then yep so then now we're inside this um, call frame for for node 2 and then since it has zero children this condition doesn't happen and it returns itself to whichever you know um, call it came from and it came from node 1's call so we're going to return it and link it up with you know its parent of 1 and then so now um, we're back in the frame for call frame for node 1 and node 1 has one more ch child to process so it's going to call node.children.append DFS then we're going to be brought into another new call frame for node 4 because this next element on the deck is 4 so we pop that off and we process it we create a new node of 4 um, of value 4 with 0 children and then since um, we're in this new frame and uh, for i in range 0 so for 0 in range 0 um, we're not going to hit this condition and then we return itself with you know this node 4 to whichever call that it came from and it came from node 1's call so we return it to node 1 and then yep so now node 1 has finished processing all three of its children it just finished this for loop for the call frame of node 1 and now it's going to return itself to um, you know whatever called this uh, initial DFS call okay so now you can see why it's necessary that we have this second piece of information you know this um, the number of children or in order to help us determine when to you know when to stop you know making DFS calls um, otherwise you know we wouldn't know how many children are belonging to each node so then it would just be uh, kind of a free-for-all we could literally just recreate it any way we wanted there would be no rules no no boundaries nothing to kind of be a barrier between each um, node and its children okay yeah so hopefully you understood that problem please go and try and implement it um, on your own now I'll have the code in the, in the description and um, yeah thanks for watching